Welcome everyone to the October 2021 meeting, uh, community meeting for the I2B2 Transmark Foundation. Uh, my name is Rudy Potenzone and welcome you. Uh, today uh, we have an agenda uh, as such and uh, the highlight for today uh, is going to be a presentation by Kavi on uh, some work he's, he's doing uh, and, and planning for uh, I2B2 in India. Uh, we'll also have some updates on our uh, symposium that's coming up uh, to just, uh, give you some highlights of what we're going to be talking about at AMIA in a couple of weeks, another week or two. Uh, and uh, just a, a brief reminder of how to get involved with the various things that we're doing uh, in the foundation and then uh, open discussion. Uh, as usual, if you have a question, uh, comment, please um, uh, leave it in the comment window. We'll keep an eye on it and we'll try to get everything answered as we go. Uh, but there'll definitely be time at the end for some questions. So uh, let me introduce uh, Kavi, who is going to um, talk about his work in Planet in India. Okay. So I'm going to talk about this experience about, uh, uh, about doing this work in India. And I should probably begin with the last slide first. That... You know, you have Sean, you know, Sean who's leading uh, you know, uh, the, the face of the effort in India and we've got uh, Love Patel, Sham, Ashok, a lot of people from the I2B2 community and, uh, you know, uh, Dell and Amazon and, uh, uh, you know, uh, support from startups in India. So the whole lot of people working on this and I'm going to share our experience over the past few months and the lessons learned and and our thought process about this engagement. And it's an open thing. Uh, it's more like, like a conversation. I would like you to like to have your feedback and thoughts about you know, whether we should do things differently. But this work is not like India limited. It's, it's like, uh, it's about taking the work to the bigger community than what we have. It's about expanding the community. Okay, so let me, with that context, so here is where we are, right? So this is the map of the world. Uh, and if you make a mental map of where I2B2 is installed, you know, where it is used, I2B transmit tooling are used, you'll notice that it will mainly be the United States, Europe, and a few other places. But the world is big. And so why not? Why is it not there at other places? And uh, why is it not being used by the medical community? And so those are the questions. Uh, and we asked, and as part of those questions, uh, and when, when those questions came up in the context of COVID and the 4C project, and at that point, I was in India and I started reaching out to hospitals uh, and whatever has happened is, you know, is, 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 is a follow-up of that. So one thing you notice is, when you look at the map of the world, that there are particularly dense regions, like in, in Southeast Asia, in Africa, there's been a lot of density of population. And they're developing nations. They may not have that IT infrastructure that, that we have here. They may not even have the public health infrastructure. So they have, uh, so it is emerging and they are beginning to adopt electronic health records and they are being available now. Um, and they can be leveraged. So it, it, it makes, it will be a big deal to have an I2B2 installation and I2B2 used over there than it would be over here. Okay. So there are three, there are three use cases that we are engaging in. Now, uh, the first use case is a research consortium that can we create a consortium in which a group of hospitals come together and they share, uh, you know, they, they organize their data in the same format and they use the same analytical software or same analytical script uh, and come up with results and together write up. Uh, and because it's across sites and the analysis across sites, the findings will be generalizable. So this this model is really pioneered by by the 4C community. You know, Griffin, you know, has has written a lot of the script for 4CE. 
about creating that, helping come up with the data model and even the analytical software the 4C community has come up with. So this is a very generic picture. Can we do this uh, in the Indian setting? Uh, so that, that is the research consortium use case, right? For 4C, can we get, you know, get them, uh, uh, get them to participate in the 4C use case on COVID? Now the second use case is the original I2BT use case, right? Even if they can't, you know, do this whole stuff, the, the, do the whole thing, and they, they, uh, you know, uh, can will I2B2 to be, to be helpful for them for doing similar projects for even the standing up and helping the research infrastructure, right? So if you have instead of all COVID records, instead of COVID records, have all patient data loaded into I2B2 and opening up the population query interface that's I2B2 to to client internal to the institution, will it help the research effort at the institution? So that's the second use case. And the third use case is in which one of the member sites is a government entity. And whether it's a town level or state level or country level, will it have any value in being able to do population queries and will it lead to any actionable public health insights? Right? So there are these three use cases that we put our efforts, you know, we, we are we are chasing. Um, okay. So any, any questions at this at this stage? Seeing none, let me move on. A little bit outdated slide. I didn't get a chance to update it, but it kind of uh, lays down the path of you know summarizes what uh, the approach you have been. So when you approach hospitals, there were like fourteen hospitals we contacted, and you know, had multiple meetings, multiple meetings, and then usually the hospital leadership has to be on board and they, they need to approve. And then the research, there needs to be a research enterprise in that hospital. And you know they need to be on board. And you need a decent IT, uh, IT staff whom you can work with. So there's these three wrong, three things that we felt are needed. Uh, and out of the 14 institutions, five of them met these five things, you know, met, met these, these three criteria. And, and our engagement is going on a lot, you know, with, with these five, with these five institutions now primarily. Most of them have got IRB approval for the COVID use case. And uh, they are now uh, working on submitting a health ministry approval uh, application. You require approval from the health, from the government of India to do this research, to, you know, uh, to do this international. I'll talk more about it later. Okay, so what are, what are the challenges? You know, what, what is different in, uh, in, these, in these institutions? First is the human resources. Uh, culturally, uh, there are cultural barrier, barriers for clinicians to, uh, to pursue research. It's not, actually it's not well looked on some, uh, you know, at, at places. Uh, sometimes like, you know, if you are doing research, people feel that you are, you know, not giving patient time and uh, there's a negative connotation at places uh, about it. And so people, clinicians are often dissuaded from doing research, you know, surprising or not, uh, because the value of research is not evident for everybody. Uh, okay, so, but, but, then, but then are researchers who, clinicians who see the bigger picture and want to pursue that, but they lack the mentorship or the, you know, which is available, which we take it as a given over here. And then the IT infrastructure uh, is often not as advanced as we have, as we take it in, in, in our major academic centers here. Uh, but there are institutions who, especially those which have you know, computer science, uh, engineering colleges and so on, they've got good IT infrastructure and expertise. IRB, uh, the IRBs function differently. The jargon is different. Uh, so like, for example, the word prospective and retrospective uh, came up a lot in, in dealing with, you know, uh, the IRBs on the Indian subcontinent. And sharing of data, the word data sharing uh, was is most critical over here. And because the IRBs are not familiar with doing this kind of research, 
there's a lot of resistance and explanation and clarification required here. And I'm sure, you know, you, all of the seniors on this call but have, have gone through this over here, you know, getting this, this kind of the research that we do over here in the US setting. You must have gone through this hoops before. It'll be helpful to have you no know, feedback from you about how, you know, how this was, how you tackle this problem. Another thing is uh, hospital administration uh, sharing. They, they 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 need to be educated about what does sharing data, population level data across institution means, and how. Uh, you know how to give access to external collaborators. It's not something that they they have routinely have been doing. And the Health Ministry Screening Committee is really a national committee. So there is an Indian law law in India which says that any research in human subjects, uh, which involves an international collaboration, needs to be approved by the Health Ministry Screening Committee, which meets once in two or three months. Uh, and once they have approved it. Even, you know, I mean, this is like blanket for any research. And lastly, we've got this uh, Foreign Exchange Economic Regulations Act, uh, which has come across, which has uh, come into effect last year. It's been tight, it's been there for many years, tightened last year, where uh, there's stringent laws about how money can be funded from, let's say, from the foundation, how, how it, you know, how it can be. Uh, given to institutions doing research in India. And obviously there is a need for funds. That is like the primary, you know, primary challenge for what is the research, you know, overall research limitation in, you know, in, uh, in the developing countries. Okay, so what is, the, what is the objective of, overall objective of the 4C, the pilot work that we're doing right now? And, you see the points here, they're actually very generic. There, a lot of them are specific for the 4C project itself. So first of all, EHR data, is it available? Uh, most of these institutions have started using EHRs recently. And uh, so what extent is it due? Given the huge volumes of patients, are the notes there? Are the lab data there? Is the medic are the medications there? And to what extent, what is the completeness of the data? Can the notes be automatically parsed to extract information? Uh, and what is the quality, you know, uh, of again the completeness and you know uh, the bias, other other codes biased towards billing and so on. And then the the approach, right? The approach that we are you we are, we are, you know that we are we've kind of adopted in which we a federated approach in which we are expecting institutions to contribute population level data. Now, what can you do with it? You know, so there's a centralized approach in which each, you know, you have data collated at one place, the patient level information coming into one place, and then you do analysis. That's the centralized approach. And then we've got a federated approach here uh, in I2B2, you know, in, 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 in what, what we're doing in 4C, where you have just aggregate level information. So what are the limitations with that? Uh, so definitely, the promise of, of, of this approach is that it is cost efficient, right? So on one hand, we've got the conventional approaches in which some people are prospectively, to answer a clinical question, people prospectively, so they, they make a, a case record form and they prospectively follow the cohort to record that information and convert it into a registry. So that has always been the gold standard. But now what we offer is an alternative in which the data is just there and EHR data is just there. And you mine that to populate your the, the variables you're interested in and then do analysis. Now, obviously the this is cost efficient and, and we, want to sh uh, we want to find out whether it is effective, whether if you ask test hypothesis on this data, uh, on the EHR data, derived data, how accurate can that analysis be as compared to registry data? So that question needs to be answered. And we can answer that to a certain extent here because some of these sites are actually doing cohort studies. They are prospectively following up cohorts to build, uh, build, build, uh, build, a, build a registry. So that question can be answered here. Okay, and, and in summary, like 
how is the automated approach? Is it better than the conventional manu uh, manipulated data approach? How does a federated approach com compare with a centralized approach? And actually, is big noisy data, in essence, better than or equivalent to small accurate data? That's the question. Uh, any questions at this phase, or should I wait till then? Okay, let let me let me continue. Here are the milestones. If you lay down uh, the steps of what are to get an institution on board uh, at a high level, so you can see first is actually getting hardware, uh, and whether it's a hardware or whether it's a cloud resource. So getting a computer where I two B two can be installed. And uh, so that's the first step, often takes months and it, ha it has been an experience. It has been taking months to get that done. Some people have clouds, internal clouds and they could quickly you know, spin off, but there's been a variation across the sites. I'm not naming the hospitals right now because we have not yet signed the MOU. So I'm not gonna uh, name any of them. Then next one is uh, installing I2B2. We've been using Dockerized version of I2B2 here. And once our hardware is there, our experience has been, it's one or two calls and they can have the I2B2 demo version running. And all the sites right now, almost all of them have the I2B2 demo version running. The next step is to load fake patient data. They have got test patients in the EHR and getting their staff to run queries uh, to you know, create dumps of that, of that data. And we're using the new ETL plugin uh, that we have got for loading data here. Uh, so that's, that's the step. Many of the sites are at that phase right now loading the test patient data. And, uh, and then they have to get familiar with creating user accounts using the admin side of the tool and making that available to the research team so that they get trust and confidence and they feel comfortable with the application. There'll be some period of time required for that. Ethics committee approval. Actually, thankfully, we've already submitted ethics committee you know, at most places and we've got the IRB approval pending uh, so the ethics committee says you can do this provided the health ministry gives you an approval, right? So that's, we are at that phase. And then they'll roll, load the real patient data. And then we will talk about harmonization, right? And then we'll, we'll have, we'll use the 4C or the ACT model and we'll do a mapping of the local data, the standard data, so that then the population level query can run and so on. Okay, and uh, so Zach, uh, Zach connected, you know, when, when we started, disconnected us to Amazon and, you know, I'm, uh, so there is this tussle about on-prem or on in the cloud. So quickly working with the Amazon India team, we, we have made this infrastructure, we made this kind of architecture about how to be confident that, uh, that our I2B2 installations are very secure. Given that uh, the the expert the awareness of security is not as much as we have here, how to make it really uh, resilient? How to make that infrastructure uh, fail fail proof? And this was a construct with Amazon team came up with that you can have a cloud formation template which spins up like an Amazon service, you know, in 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 which you have this firewall and you cannot access it. There's no data connection which goes out. The only way to get in is via a remote desktop and an S3 bucket. So there are two S3 buckets. One is going in and one is going out. And these S3 buckets are kind of serve as the audit logs. But if you want to put information in, you know, the hospital will put the file here and it's a write once, read many times. So it's kind of serves an audit trail of what went in. And then you can access it from inside, load it onto the I2B2 you know, machine and you can want to do, you can do some computation on it and create the right facts and so on. And then you want to take some analysis out. It has to be using a remote desktop inside. You have to write to the S3 bucket. And this is really Griffin's feedback at, at this time when we were, uh, you know, his learning from the N N3C about, uh, you know, that, that, that this architecture came about. And uh, so this is, this is, and we, we are actually finding this architecture very helpful, even in our work here. Uh, you know, in some of the MGB projects also, like, you know, what we are doing, we are implementing this, you know, in, 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 in the cloud, in the cloud work. 
Okay, and then finally, I want to wrap up with this ETL pipeline. Uh, so we've made this ETL pipeline, uh, maybe most of you are familiar with it, in which it's a, uh, one doesn't need to know the internals of the I2B2 tables for loading data. All one needs to think of loading data into I2B2 is two files, data file and the metadata file. The, and this is how it looks like. Uh, so we, we got this ETL tab in I2B2. It's more of a learning tool in the, the tab, but what you could do is you could create these two files. So for example, you're saying, you know, the fact file is patient with medical record number one on this date had the GLU of 160. And what the GLU is, you explain in the second file, you say GLU is uh, lab, you know, uh, it's a blood glucose of, you know, uh, uh, test, it's a lab test around blood and it's an integer. So, so this kind of, the concept file is more of the dictionary and your fact file is actually, you know, the data for the patient. You supply both these files, you upload them here in the ETL tool and you'll find that the ontology is automatically created and the facts are loaded. All the internal mapping tables are created on their own. Uh, as a, you know, the, the patient mapping, and you could optionally put in the encounter, you know, uh, num over here and so on. Um, so this is very, uh, has been profoundly helpful for work in India because then, you know, that long learning curve of getting data into I2B2 is, you know, is overcome by, with this. Uh, and this is really how it works. Uh, so once you've figured out what your form, you know, what, what your format is and you're able to produce a SQL, the CSV file, you can put it in the GitLab runner and which you can set it up to run every night and it will produce the files and it'll automatically dump them into the database. So it's directly talking to the database. Okay, so the next steps in India are, uh, in this week actually we are meeting to submit the health ministry string application long due. Uh, so we're gonna set, get that out of the way and we hope to hear back in the next three months. We want to have the MOUs with this these institution signed up. Uh, we are working on inviting ICMR to the Indian count, the Indian government for this meeting on in November, so that we can talk about the third use case. You know, having them to work will you know uh, work with us and having their expertise, and you know uh, it'll help help nav navigate the regulatory framework. We've submitted two. Proposals to ICM, the Indian, the Indian counter, you know, Indian PIs have submitted two proposals to the Indian Council of Medical Research to do for this network, and we have written up, writing up some papers there in the format of this right now. Um, yeah, so I want to, want to stop here and you know, acknowledge, you know, the efforts of everybody on the slide for for this work, and uh, we do have a workshop in San Diego to if you want to know more about the ETL tool. And you know, and and you know, we, you know, meet in San Diego. It's a three and a half workshop. I should put the time. It's at uh, one o'clock, one to four thirty. Out of the three and a half hours, we're going to have two hours of talking and one and a half hour of hands-on. And we're really hoping to have a lot of fun. And it will be great if you know if we can join you uh, if you can join at this workshop. Uh, let me stop here and open up for questions. I should mention that you know lately we've been getting uh, we've been working a lot with Dell, and Dell is supporting uh, you know is working on the requirement you know, on uh, on funding and you know, on getting some funding in place and we're really hopeful of that happening. We're working for detailed requirements of quality I to be too you know in the low resource setting. Uh, we have to account for the lack of awareness of security and it's also got to be scalable with with cheaper options like Postgres and not, you know, MS SQL. So, Kavi, you've been really amazing leading this effort. And, um, you know, we're looking at uh, many years to come for the impact of what you're doing now and, you know, how this will become a major factor in, in India and the research scenario there. Perhaps, you know, also commenting on how this really came out of the efforts people have been putting into 4CE. Um, and a lot of the work, you know, in 4CE extends to other company, other, uh... Jeff, I think I need you to mute for a bit. 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> uh, how the how thank you <laughs> how 4CE um, is uh, really extending into other countries and so you know the way that um, it's had an impact uh, worldwide has been pretty remarkable and um, you know these the way that these um, uh, ways that Dell has been able to fund some things in this space has been pretty amazing as well, where, you know, analysis after analysis, um, uh, Dave Diamond and, 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 and Cannon have been very uh, supportive of the foundation and um, their ability to do analysis and promote these analyses, you know, across the globe. And so, um, you know, it's just, but it's it's truly remarkable how you've been able to pull this together and um, and really I mean this is the kind of effort that um, you know transforms the world so it's really excellent Kyle. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Can I just copy? Can I I just wanted to jump in and and basically echo what Sean is saying? I, you know. You, Kavi talked a lot about, you know, the technical infrastructure and how that's going to work. And, you know, that's all impressive and, and, um, and, and good. Um, but the real hard, the heavy lifting is working with the government, right? Working with the hospitals and the government and going through all of the, the, the bureaucracy that, um, that exists to, to make people feel, feel comfortable. Um, and if, if we can get if we can work with Kavi and help him and support him get get over that hur hurdle, the promise is, you know, just you know, and India is one area that that um, certainly would take advantage of this because they have so little when it comes to analytical tools around clinical um, health data. But you know, this this just has a potential. I'm just really excited about it. And again, thanks to Dell for for all the work that they the support that they've given us to help us um, get i 2 b 2 to the point where it's easier to install. And, and certainly I know they're, they're interested in impact and there's a huge impact here because there's a lot of people in India um, and beyond. So I'll, I'll stop there. Just, just, just really exciting. And, and I should say a lot of what he's done has been to group together, you know, a large consortium now in India on some very significant uh, high level phone calls with the help, I should say, with Lav, who's been really active, Sham, uh, Ashok, and um, and Diane. <laughs> so, you know, that's been uh, it's just been a really big group effort. Um, you know, uh, where you know we've been able to base a lot of this in I two B two transmart, which then supports for CE, which then is supporting. Yeah, and uh, so Love Sham and Ashok have really, you know, helped uh, you know, uh, spear and spearhead, you know, reaching, making these connections. And I think what's common to all of us on this project is this feeling that we have I two B two, but why is it not there? Why why aren't people using it? Right, that is like what drives me for this. Why aren't? Why isn't it so powerful, so useful? It can be useful. So why why is it not there? That's a fundamental question I have every call, and I try get try to get the answer. And I think the answer to that has been aware, lack of awareness. They just don't know that it is there, right? My own story, uh, you know, I looked at when I was a student and I was doing my PhD uh, in India uh, on informatics, I was Googling and I saw I2B2 and I saw this beehive and I was like, what is it? it appears something very complicated. And, uh, you know, when I tried uh, reading about it, it appeared, I mean, it was relevant for the work which I was doing. I was collecting cohort patient data and uh, analyzing the cohort, but it appeared, the word ontology appeared scary, you know, uh, and really, you know, it was hard for me to install it and go in at that point. So I just gave up within a day or two. And then six years down the line, there was a postdoc at Mayo Clinic and Mayo Clinic was, you know, thinking about installing using I2B2 and I was you know, part of the evaluation. Uh, so and seeing, seeing that, so ultimately what I realized is that it boils down whether I2B2 will be at institution or not, boils down to one technical person. And if that person cannot install you know, I2B2 and you know, get familiar, you know, get feel confident about it in a few days, 
that's the end of the story. And that's what I see also in you know, this experience when I'm talking to these places. It's all about the confidence of that one per technical person, you know, and uh, so that's one thing. And second aspect which Sean mentioned is the educational component. That what fails, what 4C has bought is this, these calls where uh, people can join in, junior people can join in, and they get this mentorship. Uh, and this, this is really the mission, ed educational mission of Harvard, that you can think of an idea and you know you get this mentorship and uh, you learn me by being part of the project, right? It's almost like a tutorial. It's like having uh, you're doing the project, so that that is tremendous. Having that uh, that that educational community. Um, and I think that we, we should just like reach out to the, you know, the institutions we have connections with and just say, here is I2B, do I, you know, uh, do you think it's going to be helpful? I think just having that simple conversation is, is what, what we're doing on every call. And I, I should mention that we have these 14 institutions, uh, but there are a lot of other institutions who are evaluating it for their own project. So we have got this RSSDI, it's a Diabetology Association. Uh, who wants to do cohort analysis, uh, you know, based on their own EHR, and they're evaluating, uh, they're actually building apps. It's a little bit like a recover or, I mean, some that kind of project. They're looking at diabetics in which they are, they're taking patient consent, getting patient data in. So they have been evaluating this. Maybe we should invite them sometime to talk about how their evaluation has been. And there is this, another project in India, uh, uh, Indian Cancer Genome Atlas. It's the counterpart of TCGA. So the TCGA from NIH is actually uh, guiding this project in India. And it involves not just India, it involves Bangladesh and a few other neighboring countries in which they are going to sequence 1,000 breast cancer genomes. And they have been piloting I2B2 to collect the phenotypic information. So they have built a breast cancer ontology and uh, they are they have been evaluating for the past one year now. Maybe sometime we should have them come and come and present. Uh, so looks like they might be adopting I two B two as a model and the ontology for collecting the phenotypic data. Uh, there is this Ayurvedic you know uh, research institution, and uh, it's an Indian traditional uh, uh, system of medicine, and they have got patient data and. They have just begun to look at if I2B2 can be helpful for them to organize and make an organize their data and make an ontology so that they are aware of what data sets they have got. Yeah, I think that. Uh, so I think we we need to make this bridge of connect awareness and connection. Uh, people will find it helpful. They just it's that cell you know we need we need to do. I feel kind of kind of I feel like a salesman in, in these calls. But I feel like a salesman who is sure that he's got a great product, you know. And if you have a great product, then it's very easy. You don't have to make an attempt to sell, you know. You don't have to make an effort to sell it. it let me just stop right there. Thank you, Kavi. All right, I think we have just a, a few more updates. Actually, if you could stop sharing, Kavi, and Rudy can. Share the main deck again. So, you know, speaking of, so I, I have to, say, I, I, I love these grassroots uh, efforts. I just, I, I think that they're um, the way, you know, really important things happen. And, and so I just love them. So I, the next thing we want to talk about is just to, uh, to remind people that, um, and Rudy can go to the next slide, the 4CE. Um, symposium um, is going to be next November 16th. So that's going to take place of our regular community meeting. Um, and this is another grassroots effort that, you know, Zach Kohani kicked off, um, you know, a month after the, the, the pandemic um, sort of, uh, happened. And um, this was all about pulling together mostly I2B2 sites, um, some, some OMOP sites, but mostly I2B2 sites that, you um, that, 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 he's, that he w w knew over the years um, to figure out how we can deal with this problem. And so uh, we decided to have a symposium. It's a half day symposium from nine to one thirty. Um, and Rudy, can you go to that link so I can just show people how to register and also the agenda?
So on the ITB2 uh, Transpark website, there is a little bit small for me to read, but I, I remember. And um, Sean and Griffin are on the call. So please, um, why don't, uh, I, I um, would love it if you guys perked up and said a few things. So we're breaking it up into three different sessions. One is um, introduction to 4C and then really talking about the, the, the packaging um, and what was actually done to extract the data and how, how we did that. So, uh, and also from a clinical perspective, um, how um, we organized that and certainly pediatrics. The second agenda, the second session is all about achievements. And so what we've done is, this is gonna be a panel um, run by, um, moderated by Zach. And what we've done is we've pulled um, organizations from um, all around the world, uh, Italy, Singapore, France, um, India, and Germany, to talk about their perspective um, of how what, what they were able to accomplish as part of the symposium. And then the session three is really looking at complementary efforts. So we wanted to pull in other, uh, other folks. Um, and so I'll just mention Recover, Sean and, and um, the PASC uh, project, um, Sean and Jeff, um, the uh, George from um, Odyssey, um, uh, Melissa Handel, we'll talk about uh, her involvement in, in Recover um, as part of uh, um, N3C, um, Sabine from IMIA, um, I think we're going to get somebody from the CDC, and then Dave Diamond will talk about um, the Dell Technologies and the work that he's doing to, to support this effort. So. I don't know, uh, Griffin or Sean, do you have anything else to add? It's just that um, we expect lots of different kinds of audiences at this event. And as you can see from the agenda, the progression is starting kind of locally, what we did initially in 4C on the sort of technical side and some of the initial results, but expanding this out to what our international partners are doing and then to other consortia. And we think that progression will show how um, where 4C fits within the larger picture of COVID research that's out there and appeal to um, different types of uh, attendees at this event. Great. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just, you know, it's a great get together for this community in order to, um, you know, review accomplishments, um, think of how the work extends, you know, into many other areas, and um, and and see all of our colleagues on the on the call, and hopefully there'll be some good discussions. Yeah, definitely, and you know, we'll we'll definitely um, uh, record it and make sure it's on the website too. If you can't see the whole thing or you or you miss it. Um, so the other just couple of things I wanted to touch on, um, and then we can open it up for questions is, um, if you're going to be in San Diego, um, hopefully in person, um, if not remote, um, we're going to, so you can go to the next slide, Rudy. Yeah, we've got a number, oh, I'll keep going. There we go. Um, We've got a number of um, people that will be there um, and a number of sessions. Uh, Kavi mentioned the first session that's on Saturday from um, 1 to 4.30. Um, and that's really around, you know, introduction to analysis of VHR and OMOP databases using the I2B2 platform. So um, that's, I think that's going to be, um, a, you know, a deep dive. And we've got, we've got our 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 star lineup, Mike Mendez, Jeff Plan, Sean, and, and Kavi there. So um, I'm planning on attending. I think I might learn something. So I'm excited about that. Um, and then we have uh, some work around, this is a, around uh, 4C. The, se the second one on November 1st is, is really around um, for the 4C um, analysis. Um, and then November 3rd, this one's an interesting one. Um, Jeff, is it just Jeff? Yeah. Um, talking a system demo uh, demonstration. And this is gonna be the work that we've done, um, actually that's been supported by Dell in, um, in pulling together I2B2 and Transmart and um, showing the interoperability between the two. So um, 
we're very excited about about those. And if you're there in person, it'll just be really wonderful to, you know, to see people, even though we'll all be wearing masks. Um, okay, so Rudy, you can go to the next slide. And this is just this is just a reminder um, that you know how you can get involved in the foundation. So we've got you know certainly our monthly community call, um, but we've got a, another a, a number of additional um, working groups and and um, and meetings that that you can join. So we have a committee on technology that's chaired by Griffin, and that's something that is open to the community. And we have um, lots of really great conversations about sort of where we're going or where we think we're going or, or you know, just discussions around the, the platforms. Um, Mike Mendez runs the ETL working group that has looked at a lot of different um, ways of, of using ETL. Um, the ontology working group is now chaired by Michelle uh, Morris. Um, hopefully she's on this call. And um, I think Michelle is, is uh, you know, certainly a, a perfect person for this, this working group and, and has really lined up a lot of, um, of great topics already. So certainly, um, certainly let us know if you wanna join that one. Uh, Rudy runs a Transmart um, uh, project management group talking about the Transmart um, platform. And then Griffin runs a user interface meeting and there is a user interface meeting tomorrow at noon. Um, if you want information about any of these, you can um, you can click on the the link on the the website. Uh, but a lot of great information, and I think you know at some point we might want to think about creating a work some kind of a working group or user group for the the India network because I think that if we open that up, and I'm sure Kavi could use um, you know as much help as he can get because uh, it's a it's a big task. So we may want to think about you know other other groups, so we're happy to, to host and, and um, help support those. So that was that was all I had. So I, I think we'll open it up for, and just to let you know, we do record these uh, these meetings. Um, so certainly join, um, uh, check it out on our website. So we'll, we'll open it up for any comments, questions that folks have. This is, kind of a nothing comment, but I just want to give uh, Mike and Peter credit to they're they're going to be uh, also participating and helping me with the uh, systems demo on Monday at AMIA, or on, sorry, Wednesday at AMIA. And Jeff, are you going to record it? Oh, AMIA won't be recording it? I don't know. I, I can't figure out if AMIA is planning on recording all the sessions or not. Hmm. They'll, re they'll record them, but I think you have to, like, pay to register to get access to the recording yeah well we so, i mean if there's an easy way to record it certainly we could i don't have a i'm not bringing a video camera but is mike is mike going to be there in person yeah mike will be there so mike yes i will be there can you do the so mike i was actually going to see you know we have those three sessions yeah to see if you could record those that would be great because then we could post them to the I2B2 site. And I think especially that one that Jeff is going to do with you and Peter is going to be very high interest for this group. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, if Amy is not recording it, because I know it's virtual. But but Amy, like Diane's saying, they might record it. I, I couldn't honestly, I couldn't figure it out from I know some anyway, but but oh I see what you mean. Yeah, because you know, if we can't use it on the Transmont page if we, if they record it I see what you mean yep right that makes sense <laughs> we can certainly um we can certainly put them on the agenda for the well November will be 4C but the the December um the December community meeting we we can that's what we can do then and record it then if if um, we can't do something at uh, get a recording from Amy Any other questions, thoughts? Um, we're always looking for topics for these meetings. So please, if there's you know a way we can we can get you on the agenda, um, you know, let us know. All right. 
Well, I think if um, no other questions, I think we'll um, we'll end now and um, wish everybody a, a great day. And hope to see you next um, next month at the 4CE um, symposium. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.